In my last video, I went over denial code CO97. This particular denial code occurs because the benefit for a service or procedure provided is included in the payment for another service or procedure that has already been billed. But there are instances where if the procedure or service is distinct or unrelated to the major procedure or service, or performed during a post-operative period, you can code it separately. This is where modifiers come into play, more specifically modifier 59 and 79. In this video, we are going to go over these particular modifiers, what they mean, and how they can help prevent receiving denial code CO97. Hi everyone, I'm Maria from eTactics, and today I'm going to talk about how to prevent denial code CO97 with modifiers. Before we get started, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button below. Also hit that alert bell icon so that when we post new helpful content, you get notified. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services states that you can't report a procedure separately that was done at the same time as an additional procedure, so long as the service or procedure takes place in an anatomically related area using the same surgical approach. But as I said before, if the service is unrelated to the main service provided, you can code it separately. This is when modifier 59 comes in handy. Modifier 59 represents a different patient encounter, different session, different surgery or procedure, different organ system or site, separate lesions, separate area or injury, or separate excision or incision. If procedures are performed during the post-operative period unrelated to the original surgery, you will need modifier 79. It's important to note that you will not be able to unbundle all procedures with the use of these modifiers. You cannot unbundle code pair edits that have a zero modifier indicator. Although these modifiers are meant to help, avoiding denial code CO97 isn't always possible. However, you can lower the likelihood of running into it by asking the right questions. Before you separately code a service or a procedure, make sure you ask these five questions. Is the separate procedure or service a part of another major procedure or service? Is the separate procedure or service performed independently? Is the separate service or procedure unrelated to the major service or procedure? Is the separate procedure or service considered distinct? Is the separate procedure or service performed on the contralateral or ipsilateral side, same orifice or incision, and same organ? If you answer yes to any of these questions, it may be possible to build a service or procedure separately. Employers know that a modernized experience is essential when it comes to working with patients and collecting revenue. Utilizing clearinghouses and claim scrubbing can help you instantly spot errors within your claims. Helpful technology aside, learning about common denial codes is one of the best ways to keep your practice's bottom line safe. Equipping your team with the necessary tools to prevent denials will help you improve efficiency and give you a competitive edge in today's professional climate. If you'd like to learn more about avoiding claim denials, reach out to eTactics. And you already made it this far into the video, so you might as well like it, share, and comment below. 